G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series. I'm getting ready to head off on another big trip, but I've hit a bit of a snag. I've got an axe here that's very good, but I've got another one that's got a bit of a problem. The old handle's broken. Now, today what I'm going to look at is how to keep your Pioneer tool set, your axe, your pick, your shovel, I can get that to stand up right in tip top condition because it's tools like these that us fellow adventurers need to use to see those parts of the world that no one else has been to. So join me as we have a look into the humble axe, some of the ways that you can keep it sharp, keep it ready for that next big trip, and more importantly, a nice easy way to replace that wooden handle. Should be a good video as always, so stay tuned. Rightio, so a lot of people uh, have the misconception that you need to spend a lot of money to get yourself a decent shovel, a decent axe and a decent pick. And really these are the three key tools, three key tools, sorry, that you actually need. Now many of you will disagree and say, oh I prefer to take a chainsaw, well that's fine, but uh, us real men here like to use an axe. Um, chainsaws are cumbersome things, you've got to take fuel, oil, um, chain sharpener, spare chain, all this other stuff that you really don't need when you want to be trying to keep the weight down in your vehicle. But as I said, you don't need to spend a fortune and I'm going to show you why. Now, a friend of mine, who is a, uh, I guess, very passionate detectorist or a prospector, uh, actually found this axe head. Now, I can't remember the brand of the axe head or the make of the uh, manufacturer, but I do know it's from America. And this is probably about 80 years old. But there's actually nothing wrong with it. It's a little bit pitted in places, which we'll be able to fix up easy enough. And we've just got to fashion a handle to go in it and then this is another good quality axe that I bought a few years ago but sadly as you can see the handles missing out of it also to pick up an axe head at your local market really doesn't cost much at all and a lot of the older axe heads like this one here are actually much much better than the new ones that you'll get at your local hardware store the reason being is the steel quality is much, much better. There's a lot of stuff coming out of China at the moment, Taiwan and all the rest. And yes, it's very cheap, but hit into some hard wood with a few strikes and it's as blunt as the other end of the axe. Really good book if you want to learn more on this subject, which I've read, is the Axe Book and Shock Horror. It's actually all about axes. Um, it was written in the, I think, the late 1920s, but it is well worth a read. Um, it's fascinating at the development of the axe and how many different axes there are out there. A typical axe that we know here, and I know I'm getting off a little bit off topic, it tends to happen on these videos, is actually called an American Felling Axe. Now why is it called that? Well, you've only got one blade. A proper axe actually has two blades. And the reason why it has two blades is you'll have one that you'll preserve and keep as sharp as you possibly can. So you'll use that while you're actually felling the tree. Then once the log's on the ground and you want to actually chop it, you'll get down to the point where it looks like you might run a chance of actually hitting the ground or hitting some dirt and bluntening your blade. So what you'll actually do is then flip it around. I'll use the other axe head as an example. And you'll use the other blade. So therefore you've always got one nice sharp blade and one that you can abuse a little bit. 
Anyway, I think that pretty much explains that. Let's have a look at actually fitting an axe handle to the axe head. It's going to be interesting because even the handle has a tail. It always does here at Seriously Series. Rightio, so here's the axe handle. Now, the best axe handle you can get, I think in my mind, is hickory. And uh, there's a certain gentleman who knows how to wield a bit of hickory pretty well. There's nothing like a nice piece of hickory. I think you know who I'm talking about, Clint Eastwood. But uh, hickory is fantastic. It's hard, it's resistive, and uh, it can absorb the shock really, really well. You can pick up some pine handles from a shop here in Australia called Bunnings, but they're absolutely useless. Um, three good blows and you'll pretty much split it off and the axe head will be flying over yonder. So you really want to get a nice hardwood uh, axe handle. So anyway, what we need to do now is you usually, in an ideal world, you can get your axe head and go straight on there. But that's not the case. So what we actually have to do is we have to fashion this here uh, into the right dimensions to be able to fit it on the axe head. And I'm going to show you how to do that because there's a few special tools that you need to pick up so you can do it yourself. But the great thing is, once you buy these tools, you've got them forever. So it's still well worthwhile investing in a few new tools for your shed. Rightio, so what I've done is I've sat the axe head on top and as you can see with the black line here at the back I've then actually traced the outline of the axe head itself. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down, fashion the handle to actually fit the axe head. So rightio, I've, I've cheated a little bit, I've just used a circular saw just to get this point here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to smooth that off and turn it into a curve so it actually matches the perimeter of the actual axe head itself so this should just slot in nicely. Now to do that uh, you could spend a month of Sundays using a, just put that there, using sandpaper but I prefer to use one of these. Now I actually didn't know what these were called until the other day when I went and picked this up from the hardware store, but this is known, I think, if I'm going to pronounce this correctly, uh, a surform. And any carpenters out there, please correct me. But basically, this has a really sharp grid or mesh here, and it's really fantastic for just taking a little bit off of um, any kind of wooden item. Using this, and a rasp, which I'll show you later on, uh, we should be able to fashion the actual axe handle itself so it's almost a perfect fit into the axe head. Anyway, I better stop talking and actually do a bit of work. Okay, so we've got the rough shape that we want, now we just need to refine it. Rightio, so a little bit of sweat and not too much blood uh, we've got to this stage. So basically I've just been very careful, taking my time. And now what I've got to do, since the handle itself is fashioned in the correct dimensions for the axe head, I've just got to knock the axe head on. I've then got to put a wedge in because there's actually a slit in the handle. And this will actually allow for the um, handle to spread open. When it spreads open, this means that the axe head is actually going to be locked in place. So when you do that nice big swing, it's not going to fly off into the ether. Anyway, we'll knock that on and go from there. A little bit more sweat, but there we are. Brand new axe. So that's going to last me for another few years. And the great thing is, you get to keep your axe head. 
Now, one of the most important things is keeping your axe nice and sharp, and I'm going to show you how to do that because there's a few methods out there that people are using nowadays that actually are really, really bad for your axe head. And actually, it's so bad, in fact, that it ruins the temperament of the steel. So I'm just going to show you how you need to sharpen your axe to get the most out of it. Okay, so where people are going wrong is they tend to use a bench grinder, which I've got one here. Bench grinders are really good to use if you're wanting to try and, I guess, bring a very blunt axe head back to life. The problem is, though, is the temperature that actually builds up in the steel itself. If you actually use a bench grinder to sharpen your axe, and you start to see the steel actually going a blue-purple colour, then that's not good. That means the steel has got so hard that you've actually not so hard, so hot, sorry, that you've actually ruined the temperament of the steel. Now what do I mean by that? I'm talking about the hardness of the steel. The steel around the actual blade itself is designed to be very, very hard, so it doesn't blunt easily. So what you need to do, if you are going to use a bench grinder, is give it a few goes, get your hand, or put gloves on, and just touch it. If it becomes too hot to touch, or just becomes a little bit like, almost like lukewarm, then you need to put that under water. You need to cool it down, then you need to go back, have another couple goes, cool it down, and keep doing that process until you've formed up the actual blade itself. Now, you shouldn't have to do that if you actually keep your axe head in good nick. And one of the things I do is I just use a file. That's all. You can use a sharpening stone if you want to go a little bit further, but to be honest, uh, a good file is really all you need. Now this one's already pretty sharp, but I can just... Just go along like so. And the good thing is I can actually... If I tighten up the vice enough, I can actually get it on the right angle. Now one of the things you want to do too is when you get your file, give it a tap. Now that sounds a bit odd, why would I suggest that? Well, you actually get all this gunk and metal files and rust and cor corrosion that actually builds up in the file itself. And it's amazing, if you give it a good tap, how much stuff actually comes out of your file. And a clean file is a useful file. Dirty file, it's not worth having. So that's really important. perfect. That'll do me anyway. Another important thing too, if you are carrying the axe in your vehicle, don't just chuck it in as is, like this. You really want to have a sheath to go over it. Because what will happen, it will bounce around or it will slide around in the back of your car and all that hard work that you've put into establishing that nice sharp blade, it's going to be lost. Because it's just going to hit the steel, it'll blunt and then by the time you get to your destination and you want to chop up a bit of firewood for your campfire, it's going to be absolutely useless. So make sure you get a sheath with your axe and respect it and enjoy it. But anyway, I hope this video has gone to show that you, know, you can actually make a really good bit of kit without having to spend a lot of money. The hickory handle itself I think was $20 Australian, not much. As I said, a good axe head you can pick up for 5 to $10 from your local market. So you don't need to be a billionaire to own one of these. And if you get a real good one, it'll last you a lifetime. You might go through a few handles in the process, but each time you put a new handle in, you're going to get quicker and you're going to get better at it. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this short little video on how to keep your tools in good shape. 
uh, particularly your acts. And if you are enjoying the content here at Seriously Series, then please do consider supporting us via Patreon. And if that isn't your cup of tea, that's fine. You can support us via our website via PayPal by clicking on the web link in the content section down below. And if you're new to the channel and just figuring out who we are, what we do and all the rest, then click on the subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too. And that way you won't miss out on one single video. Anyway, hope to see you in our next video.